The following paid program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Sherry Dameron Ministries. Thank you for partnering with Sherry Dameron Ministries. Your financial support is helping us bring the Word of God to people around the world. We start trying to th- change things in the natural. We start changing our hair color and we go get this pierced and we get that pierced. We go buy stuff that we can't pay for. I'm just trying to help you, all right? What we do is we look for comfort in all the wrong places. We're restless. So we try a new medication. Prozac ain't working anymore, so I'll now I'll try Xanax. And then you try, try to take both of them. And then you come to church and y'all shouting all over the place and you don't even know where you are. Expect me to preach to that mess. <laughs> I mean, you know, dear Jesus, I got to cast the medication out before I can even talk to y'all. Why? Looking for love in all the wrong places. That's going to get you in trouble. You heard a word, and you're trying to satisfy that, that empty spot is what you call it. Because you got a word, and now I'm empty because it's not fulfilled. Right. The emptiness is not because not because anything's wrong with you. It's because that God's making room for the word. God still speaks. Okay. When God speaks a word to your spirit, and you say, I can't see that one. I can't see that one at all. I can promise you that's a word from the Lord. Okay? Let me ask you a question. How do you know when God has spoken a word to you? How do you know if somebody's prophesying to you or prophesying to you? How do you know when you can't see it? That's how you know. Okay? That's kind of like me walking up to Brother John. And, and I, I got a word for you, Brother John. The Lord said to tell you you're a black man. That ain't a word. But we are so hungry for a word till we'll receive that and shout on it. Oh, God used you, Pastor. God used you. I've been fighting that all my life. I didn't know what I was. Okay? We need to be so full of the word of God that when a word comes, we know if it's God or not. When he speaks it, it's finished already, but it's finished in a spirit realm that you cannot see. The problem is you're stuck in a transitional moment that your eyes can't comprehend. So I'm having a problem because I can't see it nowhere, no, no matter which way I turn. I can't see it. But if I'll be spirit-minded, I'll see it before I see it. You know that you're in a transition. Transition. When what used to work doesn't work anymore. And there is absolutely no reason why. Okay. That's when you know you're in a transition. Can I say this? Stop trying to figure out what's wrong. Uh Uh-huh. When what you're trying to do is not working anymore and you don't know why, stop trying to figure out what's wrong. What you need to do is you need to wait for the transition to complete. And then the word that was spoken to you will manifest in you. You hear me? That's good. I can sit down, right? I preached already. If we could just walk on that, okay? But I want to get us from A to B. And then I want to go on to Z. We're going to go all over today, okay? Transition began when God spoke the world into existence. He spoke it, and it already was. When he spoke it, it already was. But it already was in a realm that humanity couldn't see. Okay? But here's the thing. It took seven days for it to transition before it could manifest. It took seven days for that transitional period before it could manifest in a realm that humanity could actually 
operate in it. What I'm trying to tell you is it's not about you seeing it. It's about can you operate in it. Because you can operate in something before you can see it. If you understand where it's already finished. How do I do that? I don't try to operate in the word in my natural, in my flesh. I operate in the word in my spirit. God is working the word that he spoke to you. And he's doing that so that he can get you the, to the place that you can operate in the manifestation of it. How's he working the word? He's working the word in you so that you can operate in it. It's called obedience when I don't understand why. It's called, he said so, and I, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk in it. I don't have to know why. So if we can understand that God moves in transitional periods, and if we can accept that God's ways are above our ways, Amen. there's the issue right there. Yeah. That God's ways are above our ways and that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Then and only then will we clearly see what he has spoken to us. The whole key is me accepting the fact that his ways are higher than my ways. That his thoughts towards me are that of good. If I accept that and I receive that, I won't mind transitioning with him. Okay? Is that good? So the transitioning of a word from God is when this. It's when the blood of bull and goats used to work, but it doesn't work anymore. Because God has moved on. It's what God spoke. But it's not working anymore. Transition is when you're doing exactly what God told you to do. But all of a sudden, God has moved in a new and a deeper direction. And it seems as if he moved and forgot to give you his address. It's okay, you're in transition. Can you imagine how Israel felt when God told them, this is how you get to me. This is how you move me. You bring your sacrifice and you kill the blood, the, the animals, and you sacrifice them on the altar. And this is how you get, and then all of a sudden, God transitioned and they went, but wait a minute, you told me to. See, there's the problem right there, is we get a hold of something that God said, and we won't listen to God say anything else. And God is trying to move you from one thing to another. Because why? Because he wants to move you into a deeper revelation of himself. Transition. When God transitions, the transition is in the spirit realm and it's free. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it's going to cost your flesh everything that you thought you knew. Uh, wow. yeah. Whoa is exactly right. When you begin to, when God begin, we all want it. God, give me, I want to go deeper. God, I want more of you. I want to walk on a higher plane. God, I want to hear from you. I want to see dreams and visions. I want to lay hands on the sick. And I want them to recover. That's going to happen in transition. And if you want to allow God to take you to a deeper revelation of him, if you can't get off of the milk and God, because he's trying to get you over to the meat. He transitions from milk to meat. Okay. And if you're not willing to transition with him, you can't go deeper with him. Have you missed the transition from salvation to the fullness of God? Because you didn't understand the working of God. Here's what I want you to see. What I want you to see is there's more. There's more. There's more than a word just to get you out of debt. Okay? We want a word to get us out of debt. But what about a word to take you deeper? We want a word for a better job. But what about a word to take you deeper? Okay? There is a word from the Lord that transcends the desires of flesh. Every word that we seek, think about it. Every word that we seek deals with the flesh. We go to God and we pray and we ask him for something that deals with our flesh. What about seeking a word? What about asking God for something 
that deals with something more than your flesh. Because if you will allow God to transition you in the spirit, that'll deal with the flesh all by itself. That will answer everything else. God is a spirit God. And they that worship him must worship him. Okay? And we, we are still hung out here on the flesh trying to get a word from him. All right? There is a word that crucifies the flesh and makes alive the spirit. And it's in a whole new realm. And that's what God is trying to take us to. That's what God is trying to take us to. So when is it that we are going to begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness again? We, do, do you really? When was the last time that you were in prayer and you just began to weep? Not because your bills weren't paid. Not because you weren't married. Not because you're in the middle of a divorce. Not because everything is upside down. Not because your children are acting a fool. But you just began to weep because you were hungry for him. Because you said, God, give me your presence lest I die. God, if you don't go, I ain't going. If you, I ain't going up if you don't go up. I ain't coming down if you don't come down. God, if you don't go, I won't go. When was the last time that you were just hungry for him? Acts 2 and 1 says it like this. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. God moved suddenly. But it took 4,000 years for that suddenly to ever come. Okay. When you hear suddenly in the Bible, it don't mean it. It took a while. But they just suddenly saw it. They didn't realize he was talking about that back over yonder with the prophet Joel. It was a transitional moment was what it was. A transitional moment that Israel had been waiting on for 4,000 years. But because they didn't see it when the prophet Joel spoke it, what they did was they put it in the back of their minds. Hear me. And when they put it in the back of their minds, what they did was, over the years, they developed a preconceived notion of how they thought it was going to come to pass. Because when you don't see a word come to pass, you start getting in your mind, you start trying to figure out what it's going to look like when it comes. So they put it in the back of their minds, but here's what happened. Millions of Jews had heard that a transition was on the way but only 120 of them received it. Millions of Jews heard the same word. The Spirit is coming, and it's going to rest on you. Told them what everything said, it's going to sit on you. Told them what was going to happen, but they didn't see it. So they, they developed a picture of what they thought that it was be. Can I tell you something? Don't judge Israel. Because we have heard... For years and years and years that Jesus was coming. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you watching and waiting? What is your preconceived notion of what that means? That he is coming. Will you miss him because of a preconceived notion? Uh-huh. We heard... That he said that your, your young women shall dream dreams and that we're supposed to prophesy. Are you prophesying? Or are we prophesying out of a preconceived notion because we ain't never seen a real prophecy? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. What are the preconceived notions that are stored in our head, stored in our mind that are causing us to miss the transitions of God that are causing us to miss walking in power with God because we chose to just mimic what somebody else thought his move was rather than getting on our face before the Lord and crying out to him and asking him, God, what does a move of God really look like? God, what do you really look like? God, really, what do you want this word that you just spoke to me? What does it really look like? Because I'm trying to make it pass based upon the fact of what I think it's supposed to be.
I want to ask you today to partner with us as we carry the Word of God around the world to the lost, to the bruised, to the hurting, to those who cannot get to us. We want to go to them. I'm asking you to partner with us by allowing us to send the Word to you. I'd like to send you our audio CD package for $35 or more a month. We call it our grace package. So every single month, you're going to be able to receive the Word of God and the teachings of God that are coming out of this ministry. If you'd rather watch than just hear and you want the DVD, the DVD is $45 every single month. You're getting a whole lot more than just the Word of God. It's not a purchase, it's a gift. And we thank you for that. You're going to be able to know that you are helping us reach someone else. I thank you for partnering with us today. All you have to do is just pick up the phone and call 888-557-SDM7. Or you can just simply go online to sherrydameron.org. Go to the little partner button at the top and we'll walk you through becoming a partner with us. I want to thank you again for watching. I still believe. Thank you for experiencing the Word of God with us. I love you so much. God bless you. Let's go listen to the rest of the Word of God. God made a covenant with man through Moses and through the law. But then God moved to a new covenant. The Bible said it this way. The Bible said that it was a better covenant, did it not? He moved to a better covenant. But the problem was it was a transition. And they missed it again. Because the people couldn't see it, so they rejected it. So they had a preconceived notion of what it was supposed to be. The new covenant, a king is coming. I got a preconceived notion of what a king is supposed to look like. And they missed the king. Because it wasn't what they thought it was supposed to be. So we get confused when God gives us a word... Because we think that we should see it according to our perception of what he said. Mm -hmm. That's what transition is about. It keeps us from doing that when we're willing to transition. The transition is the process on the way to what he said. Okay? That's what we don't like. The process isn't for the word, can I tell you? Don't misunderstand. The process is not for the Word because the Word is perfect in every way. The process is for you. The process is for you. It's to prepare you to walk in what He said. Okay? Y'all getting it? Transition, what does it mean? It means the process of changing from one condition to another process of changing from one condition to another. You mean to tell me that I'm not supposed to come to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and stay in the same condition? That's exactly what I mean to tell you. No, you shouldn't come to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and get, read your devotional morning after morning after morning, but yet walk out the door in the same condition that you, stood, that you went to bed in. Something's wrong with that picture. Okay, something's wrong with that picture. You can't change your position until you let the Word change your condition. All right? We want to just change from position to position because the Word prophesied to us and told us about a new position that we were going to walk in. But if we saw the position based on our current condition, and now we're going to take our current condition into the new position, and you don't realize you missed it all the time. So when we receive a Word from God... Well, here's what happens. I receive a word and I get restless. We get restless because we know we heard the word. And all of a sudden I can't sleep at night. So I just take more sleeping pills. Uh-huh. All of a sudden we start praying and we don't get any answer. Wait a minute. I heard a word from the Lord and now I'm praying and telling him how to answer it. God told me I was going to preach to nations. Now I'm telling him how to get me there. God told you that you were going to be blessed and highly favored. And now you, you, you're telling him how to get you there. God told you you were going to be married. Now you're the one doing the choosing. God help you. <laughs> All right. We pray and we don't get an answer. And it seems like the heavens are brass. And this is what we do. 
we immediately start changing stuff in the natural. But God spoke to you in the spirit. Because if you heard a word in the natural, that wasn't God. God spoke to you. When you hear a word from the Lord, he's got to speak to your spirit because he is a spirit. He is a God spirit. The only one that will speak to your natural, to your flesh, is the devil because he's a fleshy devil. So if you're trying to fix something, and if you're trying to reach out and do something in the flesh, and you think that you're bringing your word to pass, then really what you're doing is you're bringing the word of the enemy to pass. The enemy will never speak to your spirit, and God will never speak to your flesh. Did I, just, did, I, did I just give you a word? Let me tell you what we do. We get a word from the Lord and we don't see it. I can't see it. I can't wrap my mind around it. So we start changing things in the natural. We start reaching out and trying to cause the ark not to fall, Uzza. Okay, for those of you who don't know that story, I'll preach that one on next Sunday. We start trying to think, change things in the natural. We start changing our hair color and we go get this pierced and we get that pierced. We go buy stuff that we can't pay for. I'm just trying to help you, all right? What we do is we look for comfort in all the wrong places. Amen. Looking for love in all the wrong places. That's going to get you in trouble. You heard a word and you're trying to satisfy that, that empty spot is what you call it because you got a word and now I'm empty because it's not fulfilled. The emptiness is not because not because anything's wrong with you. It's because that God's making room for the word. We're restless, so we try a new medication. Prozac ain't working anymore, so now I'll try Xanax. And then you try try to take both of them. And then you come to church and y'all shouting all over the place, and you don't even know where you are. <laughs> Expect me to preach to that mess. <laughs> I mean, you know, dear Jesus, i got to cast the medication out before I can even talk to y'all. Why? Because when we get uneasy, we grab for pacifiers to pacify what we don't understand. We don't realize that the uneasiness that we're feeling is God attempting to transform us into a higher realm. A higher realm. Going to a higher realm is not meant to make you comfortable. It's meant to make you uneasy. He's just putting thorns in the nest. Okay? And it's a good thing. Stop rebuking the thorns. They're there for a purpose. So since we can't see it, now we're going to make up stuff on God. Telling y'all the truth. Make up stuff on God. What do you mean? I'm glad you asked me because I'm going to tell you. We start praying for things in the natural. Because there's an emptiness in me now and I don't know how to feel it. So I know what it is. I need a man. So I start praying for a man. I pray you don't pray for a man if you already got one. That could be a mess. We start praying for a man. And we go to the dollar store. And we bump into a man. Looks like Denzel Washington. I think I'll take him so we strike up a conversation. Because obviously this is a God thing. Because I have an emptiness and I've been praying in the natural. I've been praying in the flesh. And we start talking to him. And we find out that his great, 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 great granddaddy's name was Willie. And guess what? My, my great, great, great granddaddy's name was Billy. My Lord have mercy. It's got to be God. It's got to be God. And we are making up stuff on God. God doesn't operate like that. That's not God. That's you. So then you go home and you marry him. And he picks you up in that nice car. And once you get married, you realize it wasn't his car to start with. It was his grandma's. We're trying to answer things in the natural. And God is trying to work a word in us on the inside. And what we are reaching for has absolutely nothing to do with where he's taking you. Let the word work in you. Then he'll send you a man. The manifestation of the word of God that he spoke to you, that God is sending to you, is bigger than the place that you are standing. That's why he needs to work on you. 
Because the word that he's sending you is bigger than the place that you are standing. And if you keep standing where you're standing and you don't transition with God, then the, what's going to happen is the word gets squeezed and he, it can't be manifested in its fullness. That's why we have to blame stuff on God and explain stuff for God. No, if you'll start moving to the place that he's trying to get you to, you might not see it. But when you get there, I'm here to tell you it's bigger than where you were so what I'm trying to tell you is if you can't put your finger on it and you can't quite explain it and it doesn't make sense I know I heard it but I can't quite explain it and I can't see it that's God if you can wrap your mind around it that's you well, that right there will answer 90% of y'all's questions Luke 1 and 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. He was sent to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came, came in to her and said, Hail Mary, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his sayings and cast in her mind what manner of salutation should this be. She was troubled at the word of the Lord. Have you ever got a word from the Lord and you were troubled by it? But wait a minute. The angel said, Thou art blessed and highly favored. But it said that Mary said she was troubled. Have you ever had anything that blessed you but troubled you? Yes. When it's a blessing and a curse at the same time and it makes no sense and it's completely impossible because it's completely out of your comfort zone maybe because it's completely out of your ability maybe and it's not at all what you had in mind maybe. Can I tell you that's God. You are about to enter a transitional moment. Because his word will always disrupt your plans. I said always. Mary is engaged to Joseph. Not married to Joseph, but engaged to Joseph. Okay? That's a problem. Let me tell you why. This word from the Lord was a burden and a blessing at the same time. Because this was a time when they didn't sleep together before they got married. They didn't live together. They didn't try out things before they got married. Okay? So it was a problem. Because she knew she was going to walk into a mess. I know you call me blessed, but this is going to cause a disruption in my plans. This is going to cause a mess. People are going to talk about me. They're going to, they're going to think that I've done this and I've done that. And my Lord, what in the world is Joseph going to think? Can you imagine what was going through her mind? To order Pastor Sherry Damron's complete sermon, CD, or book, please call 1-888-557-7367 or visit sherrydamron.org. To order Pastor Sherry Damron's complete sermon, CD, or book, please call 1-888-557-7367 or visit sherrydamron.org.